Hi everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here today with two of our favorite yarn bases. Knit Picks Wool of the Andes, which is 100% Peruvian Highland wool, worsted weight, and Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. Today is a really, really gloomy, gloomy day outside and I am in a strong need of a rainbow. Today I just want bright, vibrant, happy colors. So we are going to dye these two yarn bases at the same time in the same pan using some POS Easter Egg dye tablets. These are from the deluxe kit that I got in 2017 that comes with nine different colors in one kit. I'm not sure if this is the right box, but it is the right colors. Um, there are nine different colored tablets that came in this kit. And I've used this brand and these colors to dye some yarn beautiful rainbow colors. So I am excited to do this again today. We're doing some low immersion dyeing, and I'm planning on adding nine tablets on top of one skein, nine on top of the other. And I'm really curious if we're going to observe any differences, because we know that our superwash yarn absorbs color a lot faster than the wool yarn. But without a lot of water in the pan, the colors won't travel very far necessarily. So we could get something really, really cool. These Easter egg dye tablets contain sodium bicarbonate, which raises the pH of the solution. Therefore, we want to use a lot more acid than we might normally use, so that way the colors will strike quickly. I pre-soaked the yarn for about an hour. I just added 14 cups of water from our pre-soak bath, um, which is gives the yarn sort of a very nice low, cover of water. Um, they're definitely, definitely, you know, if I press my hands, it's submerged. The water level could be a little lower, but I'm actually going to make it a little higher because we need to add some acid. And as I said, we're going to be adding a total of 18 dye tablets here. So we are going to use one and about two cups of white vinegar today. This is a lot of vinegar. Normally I might use two to three tablespoons of vinegar, and I just added two cups. But I want these colors to be able to move a tiny bit, sure, but also I want it to strike and I don't want them to blend together. So I'm hoping that we will be able to sort of see a little bit of some of these individual colors, plus, um, you know, see some, uh, a little bit of blending as well. All right, so I just spread out the yarn a lot this way when I add the tablets, and I will eventually sort of like dip and move things around as I add the tablets, but um, hopefully we'll get some good color penetration and it'll be really, really pretty. I'm now going to turn on the heat, uh, let things start heating up, and then we'll add the tablets. When deciding on the rainbow order, I find it really helpful to have a damp paper towel um, so that way you can sort of swatch the different pellets to decide the order that you want to include them on our yarn. Things are nice and hot, so I am going to reduce the heat. And now we will start adding the colors. And I think I'm actually going to start in the middle with our greens um, so that way maybe I have plenty of space to space things out and then down at the end I have the reds okay and here are our blues the purples, and then the pinks down at the end. Now, one of the really cool things about these pellets is the slow release. Um, so 
Not only are we getting some space dyeing, but these do absorb pretty slowly, like they dissolve, and so that also sort of gives a continual, slow release of color. And now um, I'm helping them get a little more sort of submerged. The yellow is the color that frequently gets eaten up in these, but I'm letting the colors get a little more submerged so it can be dissolving and also trying to help things spread out a tiny bit. Um, you know, again, I don't mind if things spread a ton, but I would like to try to capture some of these colors. So, now, you obviously could do this without sort of tap tapping it at all. This is a um, obvious choice that I'm making here, but there's many, many ways to go about this. Now these purples and pinks tend to strike, well the purples definitely break, but the pinks tend to strike pretty fast, um, which is one of the reasons why I sort of plopped it at the end, but ooh, how is that for a pretty rainbow? I'm going to turn down the heat a little further and remove my glove, which I was mostly wearing to just sort of help me out. But certainly you could get a similar effect with spray bottles, but there's just something to be said for these tablets um, and the fact that they're dry and it just brings a lot of fun into these projects. I am, again, I'm touching the yarn. I want um, to give A, a chance for these colors to dissolve, B, a chance to for the colors to reach different parts, um, especially some of these reds and pinks. But in yellow, you will probably get over, yellows you always get overtaken. I don't know if that's because there's less of you or, or what. Um, or if it just these greens just don't dissolve well. You can see that this green is moving a lot. Yeah, I know I'm moving the tablets, but you know what? It's my yarn. I can do what I want. <laughs> um, but that's sort of just, again, the fun. Like, you can add the color and you can leave it alone or you can choose to manipulate it. I don't mind if there will be some white patches in here. Um, that's not something that I am horribly concerned about, um, but I am, you know, thinking about just like the color spread that I do want, and you know, there's probably going to be a lot less color on the underside as well. But so I'm just sort of thinking about all that as I am manipulating these colors around sort of get something that is rainbowy. And did all that orange? No, all the orange is not yet dissolved. I'm going to keep you a little bit away from the yellow. Bring you a little more over to the edge. But it's kind of fun to like sort of play with where these colors are coming out. And if I had, I'll grab a spoon in a bit. The colors definitely are spreading and are striking, but none of the color has fully absorbed anywhere because we still have these tablets in here and they're still releasing color, um, which is way different from if we were to do, say, a, a bottle or something of color and be spraying because, you know, we would add the color and then the color would just be there. It wouldn't still be... Um, dissolving as we're doing this. But, oop, yep, you can see if I move it, we see some color sneaking up. So, oh, this is so pretty. I am loving it. But then a lot of the stuff that we know with food coloring definitely still applies here. The reds will strike first, um, and then the yellows, and then the blues. And so that's just something with the character 
of the yarn. But the things I'm curious about today are how like deeply will these colors penetrate? Will we see them on the other side or will we see a lot more white on the other side? Will things remain very rainbow like this or are they going to bleed together more? But we have a really high concentration of acid here, so I'm really, really excited to see what happens. We're going to wait and we'll come back in 10 minutes and see how things are doing. 10 minutes have passed and I'm seeing a difference between our bowl of the Andes and the stroll. I guess I haven't mentioned that one of the reasons why it is so fun to do these two different yarns side by side is that they really do absorb color differently. Um, the Wool of the Andes absorbs color a little slower. Superwash yarns in general um, absorb color faster. We see some blues, some teals, but over here I definitely have some good yellow on our stroll, but the yellows have sort of gone orange over here on the wall of the Andes, and so I'm not sure if some it's from just the way I have it or some colors are creeping through. Um, I'm trying to make sure all of our tablets are pushed in. Now I'm going to let things sit for 20 minutes. We're going to keep the heat on really low. Keep an eye on it to make sure the water level doesn't get too low, but really give time for things to dissolve and for these colors to strike. I will note that I'm saying that this is getting a little orange in here. It's definitely more of a yellow orange than what we have right here, but compared to the yellow on the stroll, it is less bright. Interesting, you guys. Look at this. This is so cool having it all in one pan. The pink is less sharp down here. The yellow is less sharp. Things feel a lot more blended. The pink is really sharp. The yellow is really sharp here in the strolls. Again, I moved things around a lot, but this is really consistent with some of the things. Oh, awesome. We know in general about these yarns. Okay, I see a tiny bit more orange there. A hint of pink, a little bit more orange, see more green, more teal, oh, a lot of blue, whoa, um, yeah, a lot of blues down here as well. All right, what I'm going to do now is I am going to add more vinegar. I'm now at bringing over just a whole cup of white vinegar. Ha, you maybe we still had some undissolved tablet down there because we're bubbling. Oh, funny. When I moved that onto there, you could see the blues weren't striking yet because as I at poured the vinegar on, see how it's moving um, some of that color? So, with a little more acid, we can help these colors strike. Now, I don't want to like force spread things around, but I do sort of want to move the acid a little bit. So just lightly tapping. All right, and I'm going to come back in another 20 minutes. There's still some blue, a little bit of green, a hint of orange on the Will of the Andes. Over the stroll, these colors, are, okay, I've seen some blue still. The colors are a lot clearer here because I think they've struck already because that's sort of what happens uh, with a superwash yarn. We'll see things strike a lot faster than we do on a non-superwash yarn. I'm not going to turn off the heat completely, but I'm going to leave the yarn in the pan so that way as it cools we can absorb some more of those colors. As frequently happens around here, it is the next morning and let's see how much color is left in the dye bag. Oh, that's pretty good. And check out that color penetration. I see a hint of white in one spot, but ooh, this Wool of the Andes has some really, really great coverage throughout the whole skein of yarn. And it looks like that leaving it in here really did let those colors absorb. I'm plopping the yarn. Okay, this is the real moment of truth. Oh, we got some really nice color penetration here too. 
There's definitely some white, but I'm so glad there is so much color on the bottom side. Um, and that it looks like we did absorb all of the color. Like I'm not really, like this looks clear to me. So now let's go wash the yarn. My mom saw these yarns in my pan and threatened to take them home with her. I will say that if I'm feeling down or really anything, there's a dying a really nice rainbow really can be a great pick-me-up. Whoops. Alright, I'm adding some clear dish soap. That was a nice healthy handful of our dish soap. But we're trying to see if any of the colors are bleeding. But again, I am so happy with how bright and happy these colors are, especially since it's been so cold and dreary outside. There might be the fairest hint of color, or else it's a reflection from my blue dress. But either way, I'm going to go ahead and wash this a couple more times, um, get out the soap and any extra color, and then we'll hang up the yarn to dry and come back and take a closer look at it. I've done rainbows with these Easter egg dye tablets multiple times and I've even looked in one pot and done superwash and non-superwash yarn in the pot at the same time. But this time it was a little more controlled because I was able to, with low immersion, put these tablets in areas where I knew locally there was the same amount on top of the wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn as there was on top of the stroll fingering. And you can really see that even with, with me trying to help these colors, the dye spread out a lot, lot more on the wool of the Andes yarn. If I flip them over, maybe we see a hint more of yellow, or at least a more yellow-orange, but there's no question that that yellow is so much sharper on the stroll yarn. Not to mention there's a lot more white on the stroll yarn. The colors also feel darker and a little more vibrant on the stroll. But again, that's an artifact of the fact that these colors were striking really, really fast, so and therefore they weren't spreading through the fibers. And so as the colors spread out, they blend a little more. And, you know, in, on average, they are a little paler. Having dry dye in a tablet form has a lot of possibilities. One of my favorite ways to use them is in a cake of yarn where the colors can spread, but you can sort of control and insert dye locally into the center of the yarn cake, which I just think is really, really cool. What's your favorite way to use these Easter egg dye tablets? Do you prefer to use them to dye eggs? Or have you gotten on the Chemnitz bandwagon to use them for dyeing yarn? Let me know in the comments. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you never miss a new video, um, and also make sure to follow me on social media. On Instagram, I'm at Chemnitz, and I'm just Chemnitz on Facebook. And there you'll frequently see me posting things real time. For example, when before Valentine's Day I discovered that the Easter egg tablets were already on sale at Party City, I posted about it. In addition to critically important PSAs like that, I do also share some of the things I'm working on more in real time. Frequently there is a bit of a delay between the videos that I am filming versus when they're published, and so it's a way to sort of get connected with what I have in the dye pot right then. If you're a huge, huge, huge fan of Chemnitz and want early access to new videos and exclusive behind the sneak peeks, as I'm working on the newest and freshest material for these videos, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Uh, there's a ton of cool perks, including shout outs, uh, coupons, advance notice of shop restocks, and you can find more details at the link, which you can find in the video description, iCard, and comments. Thank you so much for watching.